welcome to Conversations with Dr. Westman. And today we're going to be chatting about how to understand your HbA1c and what is an HbA1c. We also have a bonus for you and it's Dr. Westman's free th top 10 things you need to know to lose fat on keto. And we'll put a link for you in the description. How are you doing, Eric? Doing great. How are you, Glenn? Always good. Thank you so much. And so, Eric, um, HbA1c, what exactly is an HbA1c? Well, the HbA1c is the same thing as the hemoglobin A1c. It's the same term. Uh, some people use HbA1c. Some people use hemoglobin A1c. And what it is is a test that your doctor can draw from the blood that represents the blood sugar level on average over the last three months or so. So the um, important thing to know is that A1C is a marker of elevated blood glucose or pre-diabetes. Diabetes is a problem of elevated blood glucose, and it could be a marker to say that you have diabetes. So it's often used by a doctor to screen for, or, or even to monitor the treatment of diabetes um, in an individual, and it's a simple blood test to do. Now, um, a lot of people out there, um, you know, they, they feverishly measure their blood glucose. Every time they eat something, they're measuring their blood glucose. Um, and really, that doesn't tell the whole story. And in fact, that's not going to tell you whether you have prediabetes or not. I mean, your blood sugar can be sky high. That's not going to tell you if you have either diabetes or prediabetes, unless I'm wrong. Um, but really, it's your HbA1c um, test, the blood test, that's going to be the, you know, the predictor or tell you, you know, you know, if you have got type 2 diabetes. Am I right? Yeah, so... Um... Actually, um, depending on which guideline you look at, how to define diabetes, they usually use a combination of the elevated blood sugar, but it has to be several times and, and usually fasting, but sometimes after meals. But the simpler way, and it doesn't require someone at home to measure blood sugars or, or doing a clinic test, um, is to check a A1C, hemoglobin A1C, HbA1c, all the same thing. I'll just say A1c. The A1c will give you the marker of that sugar over the last 90 days or however long the, the red cell has lasted because the that's getting into the detail of the how it's measured. But um, the A1c itself um, will incorporate or, or include those blood sugars that go up after meals. And so it's, it's an easier test to do. And uh, I, I don't know if you remember from calculus, the, if you have a curve from high school math, if you have a curve, you can take the area under the curve, it's called an integral. And you can, the A1C basically takes that area under the blood glucose curve without having to test it all of those times during the day. So it's a summary measure that um, will tell you whether your blood sugars have been normal or a little high or very high over the prior three months before the test is done. And so um, that is that is another something that you've that you've explained to me that um, that I didn't know to be honest with you because I was always under the impression that um, testing your blood sugar at home um, kind of would just tell you what kind of foods would would affect your blood sugar the most. Kind of, you know, the way I used to look at it is, you know, if you take a, a, a billionaire, for example, and you, you took a snapshot of his bank balance at any given time, um, you wouldn't be able to determine his wealth by looking at that snapshot. Um, you would need to see, you know, three month average, uh, same as the HbA1c, which is a three month average. So um, I didn't know that you could actually tell um, if someone has prediabetes or, or type 2 diabetes uh, by... Um, by doing a number of, of um, instance blood glucose readings? Yeah, well, the reason for that is the blood glucose is carefully regulated. The, the body doesn't like it when the blood glucose is elevated. I mean, I mean, I know that's kind of a, you know, it's called anthropomorphizing when we call it, say a body doesn't like something. I mean, I, I'm, it's designed to not let the blood glucose go very high. And by the, the morning after not eating overnight, it, it you know, it's almost like, you know, it's always going to be, you know, under a hundred. 
uh, as the 100 milligram per deciliter that. So you can, if it doesn't return to that and it's elevated in the morning and you do that once or twice and it's a little bit elevated, that's pretty a reliable indicator that over the course of the day, it has gone up higher and the, the regulatory system is, is, get, is starting to, to break down. And that's called insulin resistance. When insulin doesn't work like it used to because insulin is what lowers the blood glucose, it keeps it down. So you can, um, the, the after a meal, I think that's what you're thinking of. After the meal, the blood glucose can go up if you're eating carbs, but then it should come down into that normal zone. So when that normal zone starts drifting up, that represents an underlying metabolic problem. So I guess it's going back to the bank analogy, no, you don't know, but if the guy's got a billion in the bank today, you know, he probably had it last month, you know, <laughs> you know unless hit the, you know, the lottery or something. But, but so um, I, I like your, your analogy there, but uh, we're talking about um, a range that really should be tightly controlled. And as it gets uh, out of whack, uh, so to speak, that represents an underlying prediabetes insulin resistance that you really don't want to go down that path. Uh, so really the blood glucose it itself is um, meaningful, though uh, you need several, me several um, uh, tests to be sure that it's there or most doctors just go to the A1C because it's a, just a one-time test and it's really reliable too. Now on this point, um, I know there's going to be a lot of people who are going to get a lot of comments in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the comment section and they're going to say, um, but hang on a second, my blood sugar is very elevated in the morning. And I know that you get something called dawn phenomena, which we're going to do a, a whole episode um, on. But could you maybe just speak to that? Because um, someone may someone may in fact have elevated blood sugar in the morning, but they may in fact have dawn phenomenon. Right. So the dawn phenomenon is the metabolic change, hormonal change in the morning. Uh, cortisol goes up. That if if you're um, you know working during the day, sleeping at night, it, it's going to be different if you're working at night. Uh, sleeping during the day, but the dawn phenomenon is the elevated blood glucose in the morning when you haven't eaten anything. And people will come to me, you know, but I didn't eat anything. Why is it high in the morning? Well, it's because the cortisol goes up to get you prepared for the day. That's a uh, circadian rhythm or daily variation that there is. So the blood glucose, even on a keto diet, might be a little bit elevated in the morning. I mean, it's, you know, 110, 120 not 160, 180, 100 milligram per deciliter. That little bit of elevation is not anything to worry about if the rest of the day, the blood glucoses are down. And that again goes to the importance of the A1C, which shows that integrative under the curve. If you're just a little elevated in the morning, but the rest of the day you're down in the normal range, your A1C is gonna be normal. So it's like, it's getting too, uh, too nervous and worried about something that really doesn't matter that much if you're worried about that first morning glucose and that's the only time it's elevated. Well, you know, now uh, some of my patients are coming in with these continuous glucose monitors. Uh, doctors are prescribing them. I, I think in some cases you can just get them without a prescription even now. And then, so they're actually multiple times a day checking the blood glucose. And so we have a lot of information without knowing what to do with it. Um, and but and so if you come to this the, thinking that oh the blood glucose needs to be normal all day long that's a tough bar to achieve you know even exercise can raise the blood glucose because you need it when you exercise so I, I, I reassure a lot of people who come to me concerned about that morning elevation of blood glucose from the dawn phenomenon it's okay now let's get back to HbA1c what is the predictor for top what is the number that people should be looking out for when determining if they have pre-diabetes and what is the number to look out for if they actually in fact have type two diabetes when specifically looking at HbA1c? Yeah, you know, the problem with a number and a cut point is that these are just arbitrary points that are made, you know? What you want is the lower the better with an A1c. So um, we could say, you know, six means pre-diabetes, 6.5, is diabetes and seven, but you know, they even they, meaning the experts change 
the numbers over time, you know, and so they can cure a whole bunch of people by just changing the definition of diabetes by 0.5. Um, but uh, so the lower, the better, and you want to be in the fives, 5%, 5 if at all possible, uh, with the A1C. If so, if you're in the sixes, seven, eight, if you're in seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, this is diabetes, uh, you know, severe diabetes if you're over 10, 11, and 12. Um, and, um, you know, if this may be what motivates you to take action to change a uh, lifestyle. And you know, I've been working using low carb keto diets for 20 years in research and in the clinic. And people come back to me saying, gosh, this is so easy. I wish I'd known about it before. So if you're, you know, thinking that this is a call to action, try something that's relatively simple and easy and effective. And that's, you know, the kind of program that we've been using at Duke for, you know, 20 years in research and in the clinic. Um, so I guess the other main message, if the, the A1C is a little bit elevated, you don't need to go on medication at first. Uh, and doctors are taught to just use medication. An elevated A1C is just kind of a wake up call that you need to do something about your metabolism and diet is a very potent lifestyle and diet. We can do so much by changing that. We don't need medications. In fact, I take medications away from people. Uh, but so you, you want the lower, lower the A1C, the better in the fives, if at all possible. Now, my final question is for folks out there that are wanting to go get their HbA1c tested, how do they go and do this? Are they able to just go and take the test are the, or do they have to be referred by a doctor? How does someone go and get this test? Well, um, most doctors in the U.S. anyway will order an A1c if you ask them. It's uh, one of the issues with asking a doctor to do a test is if it's not covered by insurance, you might get a bill for it. And then the patient gets upset that the doctor ordered a test and the patient got charged for it when the doctor. So it depends on if you think that insurance should cover all the test costs, then the doctor wants to be sure your insurance will cover it. A1C is generally covered as a screening tool to, for, for the general public, for everyone. So um, if the doctor or you don't see a doctor regularly in some states in the US, you can order it at a, a kind of retail place on your own and get it, you have to pay for it on your own though. Wonderful, Eric. Well, thank you so much again. Um, always learning something on these shows. Um, that's all we have time for today. Um, for you guys watching uh, at home, don't forget your bonus, Dr. Westman's free 10 things you need to know to lose fat on keto. And we'll put the link for you in the description. Um, if you guys would like to learn more about Adapt Your Life Academy and our upcoming courses, we've got some great new courses coming out. You can find us on adaptyourlifeacademy.com. Eric, once again, we really appreciate your time. We look forward to catching up with you next week on another interesting topic. Uh, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much, Doc. Well, thank you. I can't wait to get another Adapt Your Life Academy class going. Well, we can't wait. We do have another one coming out. I'm not sure when this video will be aired, but we do have one coming out on the 26th of April. I think the, uh, the cart will only remain open, be remain open for five days. Uh, and then we have one um, probably six to seven weeks after that. So uh, yes, it's going to be exciting. We, are, we, we typically um, 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 sell out of those courses. So um, we're giving a lot of value and we are, we're getting some, some great feedback from those courses. Thank you so well, much. One of, the, one of the important things is we follow people and help them get started, which has really helped lower the, the fear or anxiety of getting started. That, that was brilliant. To, to, we follow people for three weeks in a private group so that we can help people you know, with questions and get started on the right foot. 100%, that does give a lot of value. Well, Eric, it's a it's a it's a it's a great thing that that uh, we're doing. We I'm definitely enjoying it, and uh, big thank you to you. Thank you so much. If you like this video, you're going to love our Adapt Your Life Academy. So click on the link in the description to find out more.